history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. From KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at 10. And we begin tonight with new developments in the coronavirus crisis and a possible case in our own backyard. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Dominique Soxa. And I'm Jonathan Martinez. Here are some of tonight's headlines. Six University of Houston students and staff members are in self-quarantine after they traveled overseas. More details on that in just a moment. But first, we are learning more about Fort Bend County's first presumptive case, positive case, in fact, involving a 70-year-old man. So what exactly does presumptive positive mean? Well, that means a patient suspected of having coronavirus is receiving treatment as if he is infected while awaiting official test results from the CDC. Channel 2's Keith Garvin live at Fort Bend County Health and Human Services with the newest information for us tonight. Keith? Dominique, Jonathan, the case is listed as presumptive positive, but they believe this patient does have the COVID-19 virus. The results came back earlier this afternoon, and what they've been able to find out is that health officials believe in Fort Bend County. They're saying that it was only a matter of time before they had their very first case of coronavirus. We know this news is concerning. It is not unexpected. The first presumptive positive case of COVID-19 in Fort Bend County. Results came back at 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoon. Although they will undergo more testing, local health officials believe this is the real deal. We believe that the result is, in fact, an actual, uh, con uh, an actual positive. It will undergo a confirmation process at the CDC. But at this point, we have no reason to believe that there's anything other than accurate. What we know about the patient, he's a male in his 70s. He tested positive after he traveled abroad and became ill upon returning to the United States. His symptoms were discovered by his personal physician and he had no pre-existing conditions. The patient now is hospitalized and listed in stable condition. But citing HIPAA laws, health officials were extremely tight-lipped about what country the man traveled to, what airport he returned to, or when the tests were conducted. They do say at this point the situation appears to be isolated. As this case was associated with travel, th at this time, we still have no evidence of community spread of COVID-19. The patient's test was conducted by the Houston Health Department Laboratory, which now has the ability to test for any possible cases in southeast Texas. Results still will be sent to the CDC in Atlanta for verification, but they can be acted upon immediately. The big difference is that we're going to be able to get test results much more quickly than we have in the past several weeks. 
And in response to this presumptive positive case, parents in Fort Bend County will want to listen up. In a tweet this evening, Fort Bend ISD said Fort Bend ISD is aware of the presumptive positive case of COVID-19 in Fort Bend County. The safety of our staff and students is always the top priority, and we will continue to monitor and take the guidance of the CDC and local health officials. Now, a confirmation of the patient's results are expected from the CDC within the next day or two. In the meantime, health officials here already have launched an investigation to see who that patient came into close contact since he has returned here to Fort Bend County. Reporting live, Keith Garvin, KPRC, Channel 10 News. All right, keep us posted, Keith. Thanks a lot, sir. The federal government is sending out thousands of coronavirus testing kits across the nation tonight. Vice President Mike Pence says 2,500 kits, which can test as many as 1.5 million people, are being sent to state labs and state universities. The tests will be considered an essential health benefit, meaning it will be covered by every insurance, including Medicare and Medicaid. Tonight, we are learning that four University of Houston students and two staff members are in self-quarantine. They recently returned from a trip to Italy and South, Carolina, South Korea, where coronavirus cases have soared. U of H says two others are set to return by the end of the week, and they will also be self-quarantined. The quarantine period will last 14 days. United Airlines has announced some major moves amid growing coronavirus concerns. The company is cutting international flights that are scheduled for next month by 20 percent, and flights here in the U.S. and Canada by 10 percent. The airline is also suspending new hiring through at least June the 30th and also suspending any salary increases. We do want to be open and transparent with you in our coronavirus coverage. So here's a little perspective as we've been comparing coronavirus to the flu and updating those numbers for you. According to Johns Hopkins Medicine, there are approximately 92,818 people infected with coronavirus worldwide. There's an estimated 1 billion people infected with the flu. So far, more than 31 people have died from coronavirus around the world. There have been 11 deaths here in the U.S. Somewhere between 291,000 and 646,000 people die every year from the flu globally. Developing tonight, Child Protective Services is, is investigating a Northwest Harris County daycare after a five-year-old girl died. Channel 2's Jacob Rascone is live at the Texas Medical Center and just spoke with investigators. Jacob? Yeah, Jonathan, investigators say there is no obvious explanation for what happened, and there is also no obvious signs of trauma. So tonight, deputies are investigating the death, and Child Protective Services is investigating at the preschool where it happened. The call came in around 4.30 at Kleinbrook Community Preschool in northwest Harris County. We could see deputies inside there. The girl, we're told, had stopped breathing. She was flown by life flight here to Memorial Hermann, but she did not survive. Investigators, were told, believe the autopsy will help clarify exactly how the girl died. No charges have been filed at this time, and representatives for Kleinbrook Community School and its parent have not uh, decided not to comment tonight. Reporting live at Memorial Hermann, I'm Jacob Rascone, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Tragic story, Jacob, thank you. New at 10 o'clock, a ring doorbell camera catches a glimpse of a man trying to break into a home in northwest Harris County. Happened last night at about 11.45 on Lamburn Circle, just north of Spring Cypress Road near Champion Forest. He realizes that he's being recorded, and then he tries to hide from the camera's view. Harris County Constable Precinct 4 deputies tell us that there were two thieves. They eventually made their way inside, but then they ran off after being confronted by the homeowners. They stole a purse and the homeowner's car. Thankfully, no but he was hurt. The number of people missing in Tennessee after a string of destructive tornadoes has gone down, but the death toll has remained the same. Yes, it has. The tornadoes are blamed for 24 deaths in Nashville and the surrounding areas. The very latest now from Channel 2's Roseanne Aragon on the ground in one of the hardest hit areas. This entire neighborhood here in Putnam County was devastated, and this is not an unfamiliar sight. But today was about the process of cleanup and recovery with many people willing to help. Sometimes the simplest things can make the biggest impact. There can be beauty throughout this direction, and that beauty can come from within us. That beauty in the form of hardworking hands. We get the name Volunteer State for a reason, and you can see it here today. By people who simply care. We're here to support, you know, the people that got completely devastated. We're here to help. The death toll, the uncertainty, the survivor's guilt is real. I've cried a little bit. I'm, I'm numb. I'm shocked. Um, we've, 
I don't, I just don't have enough words. People are still without power. The rubble needs to be cleaned up. The rebuilding is still ways away. But as another day goes by, this is what people will remember. And in the chaos, this brings perspective. Things like this don't really matter. What matters is that you, your family is safe. And when the sun rises tomorrow, there is no doubt there is plenty of work left to be done. From Putnam County, Tennessee, Roseanne Aragon, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Roseanne. Looking at the race for the White House tonight, former Vice President Joe Biden is holding a steady lead tonight after a string of Super Tuesday wins. Biden holds the lead tonight with 527 delegates. Behind him sits Senator Bernie Sanders with 475 and Elizabeth Warren with 48. Now, Biden has been declared the winner in 11 states, including Texas, while Sanders has taken five, with NBC News still classifying California as, quote, too early to call. The state's mail-in ballots are still being counted. Happening tomorrow, single-game Houston Astros tickets will be going on sale. This is we are now less than one month away from the home opener against the Los Angeles Angels. Tickets will go on sale tomorrow morning bright and early at 9 o'clock. A plane en route to Texas forced to make an emergency landing. Coming up, you see the way the passengers jumped into action when a man tried to open the emergency exit mid-flight. Plus, shopping for health insurance without the frustration. We were able to go from a potentially $600 a month bill to health insurance for him that would be 180 bucks a month. I'm investigator Bill Spencer. How one company is hoping to disrupt the entire health insurance industry while saving you money. And I'm not too worried about rain for tomorrow. I'll tell you why coming up. Jackets, though, that's going to start your day. But then the kids will probably leave them at school because it's going to warm up very nicely. A lot of sunshine in tomorrow's forecast. The weekend ahead, it's a rock and rodeo kind of weekend. I'll have it all coming up on Channel 2 News at 10. New at 10 tonight, passengers flying to DFW Airport sure are happy to be home after investigators say a passenger tried opening an exit door mid-flight. It happened on an American Airlines flight from Chicago yesterday. Passengers say this man was seen pacing up and down the aisle when he lunged for one of those doors and tried opening it. Nearby passengers then jumped into action, helping to subdue that man. He was taken into police custody in St. Louis. With all the news breaking on coronavirus, chances are you're thinking more about your health care than ever before and get this staggering number more than 25 million Americans have no health insurance of any kind and cost a huge factor but now a brand new company is hoping to completely shatter the traditional health care insurance model making health care cheaper and easier to understand tonight consumer investigator Bill Spencer shows us a new way to buy health insurance So here's my son Trey. He's running at a track meet or a cross country meet, I believe it was. JJ Holly, a proud father from the Woodlands, watches video of his 20 year old son Trey racing down a running track. Is he pretty healthy, your son? Yeah, he's still pretty healthy. But with Trey living away at school, JJ soon realized his son would need health insurance. But when he checked the price to add his son to his insurance coverage, he learned it would be $600 a month for a healthy young man. He needs to be covered. What are we going to use? That's when JJ discovered a brand new kind of health insurance company called Sidecar Health that offers health coverage up to 40% cheaper than traditional health plans. We were able to go from a potentially $600 a month bill to health insurance for him that would be 180 bucks a month. We started Sidecar to lower the cost of health insurance for everybody in America. Enter Patrick Quigley, who created Sidecar after he was forced to pay 1300 bucks for an MRI through his traditional health insurance. A few weeks later, he needed a second test, but this time decided to pay for it himself in cash. I happened to ask the office, hey, can I just pay for this cash? It'll just be easier for me. And they said, sure, it'll be $330. And that blew my mind that at the same location with the same doctor, I could pay $1,300 through my traditional insurance or I could pay $330 cash. That's when Quigley started Sidecar Health, an insurance company that eliminates a mountain of paperwork by giving every member a Sidecar credit card that they use to pay their doctors directly at the time of service. 
So how does that save you money? The providers don't have to deal with the back and forth of the traditional insurance company. They don't have to send paperwork back and forth. They don't need to argue about what something's covered or how it was billed. They just get paid. It's cheaper for the doctor, so it's cheaper for the patient. I want to join Sidecar Health. What do I do? Well, the first thing you do is you come to our website. On the website, Quigley shows us the price of three standard plans for an average 30-year-old male with no major health problems. The budget plan costs $165 a month for exactly $10,000 in health coverage. The standard plan is $199 a month for $25,000 in coverage. And the premium plan costs $279 for up to $2 million in coverage a year. Sidecar covers up to 170,000 medical procedures. It also shows you what that procedure should cost and what Sidecar will pay so you know exactly what you'll have to pay out of pocket. And one more thing, Sidecar shows you a map of what different doctors in the area are charging for your procedure so you can shop for the very best price. Dr. Ramirez is charging $74 to go do a typical office visit. And again, we pay a fixed price of $143. So that uh, if you go see Dr. Ramirez, you're getting about $70 back in your account for next time. Sidecar does the same thing with pharmacy prices. Look at the variation of what our members can expect to pay here. I mean, it's everything from $96 if I go shop at this particular pharmacy all the way to getting $8 cash back to my account if I go shop at this pharmacy. As for JJ, he figures he'll save more than $5,000 this year going with Sidecar instead of traditional health insurance. Andy knows exactly what his son will be getting for that money. He gets 25 grand worth of coverage. So if he gets a sinus infection, he can go to the doctor, he can use that card, he can swipe it, pays the cash price, he's in and out. Now you should know that Sidecar Health is not for everybody. It's geared toward people who don't already have health insurance through their employer. And you need to realize the limitations, meaning if you buy $25,000 worth of coverage, you will get exactly that, $25,000 to spend on health care for the entire year, and that's it. After that, it's all out of pocket. If you want more coverage, you can buy more coverage. Finally, remember, the price you pay for Sidecar will be custom tailored to you and your needs. Hmm. All right, so the big question here for traditional, you've got in-network, out-of-network, mm -hmm. what's the deal in this case? In this case, you get to pick whatever doctor you want. Uh, uh -huh. You don't have a network to worry about. And also, you really don't have to worry about surprise medical bills later on right. because you're paying for the procedure at the time of the procedure. It's paid for, it's done. I oh, love yeah. that concept of yeah. an allocated amount and then you get a credit back in your account if you do some budget shopping. Yeah. Bring exactly. music to my ears. <laughs> to all of our ears. Exactly. It's great. Thank right. you. Yes. Wonderful Thank you. story. Okay, so tomorrow at 10 o'clock, we're asking this question. Where do you get your political information? I get it from Facebook or Instagram, social media. I get it from the local news at night, uh, the national news sometimes as well, family, friends. So Channel 2 investigates will let you know how to know if what you're seeing and hearing is really the truth or is it just fake news. And if you've got a story for Channel 2 Investigates, call the tip line 713-223-TIPS or you can email investigates at kprc.com. Ever another exciting night at the rodeo in the books. Texas legend Willie Nelson took to the stage tonight, marking the country music icon's 10th performance at Rodeo Houston. And every year you think it's going to be his last. And uh uh, he's he keeps coming back, back and more. he looks and sounds the same. Yeah, I know. Got we it Kind of like that turkey leg. <laughs> As well. <laughs> yeah, that fried Snickers. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Okay. They've got the weird food tomorrow. I'm I know, right? Oh, yeah, he's tasting food tomorrow. Oh, good. Okay. I'll let you know how it goes. From 9 to 1. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be uh. nice. <laughs> we'll see how much. I have some Nexium if you need. Nice. Yeah, yeah, he'll get it already. It. Uh, okay, so the sun is finally coming out. In good. Fact, this, okay. this, this afternoon, right at about 6.30, people were getting some sunsets in Richmond. That. Look at that. Beautiful. I know, just smiling at us. And look at that. Ooh. I know. that. In fact, two from Psycho Granny, that one and the golden one. Oh, oh that's great. Beautiful. This is right there in Cleveland, up the road. Mm -hmm. And then this is down the road of Tiki Island. I like from it. From Tiki Talkie, mm -hmm. also Tiki Island. I don't know if they know each other. <laughs> they should <laughs> they if they don't. They a TikTok video all together, too. <laughs> right. There's a, there's a Texas country 
setting, clearing from the west. Indeed, we're going to have a nice one tomorrow. 59 right now. It's on the cool side. Winds are north at 6. That's the reason why that's going to continue down in Galveston. At least we're not talking about fog, right? 61 with a north wind at 9 miles per hour. So it's cleared all of that out of here. Mid 50s to upper 50s to low 60s across the board right now. He winds right out of the north. 12, 6, 7, 10 miles an hour. 16 out toward Britain. We're going to continue to see some fairly healthy winds. They may go down a little bit during the night, but I think they'll pick back up tomorrow morning. So 7 a.m., 10, 11, 12 mile an hour wind. So a bit breezy and certainly on the cool side. And when you look at all this rain on radar, you think, well, where's that? I'll tell you what, I'll take a look at this. First of all, here's the Doppler for the last hour. And this light blue, it's just next to nothing and nothing down where we are. So if anything traces, I think it's all evaporating before it reaches the ground. There's this dry slot right there. So uh, the uh, computer model, you might look at and say, well, it's going to be a little bit of a wet night. I don't think so. I think it's just not going to make it in. In fact, I've got clearing skies continuing as we get into tomorrow morning and then all day tomorrow. Lots of sunshine is in the forecast. Temperatures go right on down through the 50s to maybe some upper 40s showing up. College Station's got mid 40s, 48, 49. Huntsville, Conroe, 52 at Bush, 53 downtown. So sweater weather. By the time we get to lunch, we're in the mid 60s. Then in the afternoon, in the low 70s. So we'll continue to see this low move on out of here. High pressure building in. There is another front that comes through on Saturday or Friday into Saturday, which gives us a little bit of a cool down for Saturday, but it's a dry front. So I'm not looking for any rain out of that, but you'll notice it gets cooler. So 70, 72, Thursday, Friday, and then down to 68 and 50 on Saturday. On Sunday, 72 and 54, we get into some messy rain chances Monday through Thursday and another front on Friday. But a lot going on Saturday with the uh, Saber Cats and the Roughnecks, and we get change our clocks forward one hour, lose an hour of sleep, but get that yep. sun setting at 725 this Sunday. That's All traumatic changing. losing an hour of sleep. Hour. Uh -huh. <laughs> More time on the golf course as we always do. Yeah, that's go. a good Bright side. That's it. Mm -hmm. Randy joining us now. Big stretch begins for our Rockets. It really does. Uh, the last quarter of the season uh, starts tomorrow night. 22 games left. Pretty good spot right now. Uh, they're all important, though, down the stretch. Couldn't beat those Knicks on Monday. So what are they saying about hosting the streaking L.A. Clippers? We're going to hear from Mike D'Antoni straight ahead. Plus, how Zach Greinke showed again today why he is ready for the regular season. Astros wrap coming up next. Tetris Firm. All right, welcome to the Xfinity Sports Test tonight. Here's what's happening. We'll start with the Rockets. They face a final 22-game stretch and try to improve that seed in the Western Conference. Back to practice today at Toyota Center after that big meltdown in New York against the Knicks on Monday. Time now to bounce back, and they better bring it because the red-hot and fully healthy L.A. Clippers are in town tomorrow night. Clips are currently the number two seed in the West, certainly a threat to the Lakers, so no lack of respect from head coach Mike D'Antoni. They're, they're one of the best teams out there, if not the best, and uh, we know that. And so it's always going to be a good game. It just has a little bit more implication now than in November or whatever, just getting closer to playoff time. Yes, it is. 7 o'clock tip tomorrow. Rice men in Hattiesburg taking on Southern Miss tonight. Hot start from the distance. They do this very well. Drew Peterson puts the Owls up 20 to 12. And then Trey Murphy the third always has the touch. Three more right there. Owls start to pull away. And then Robert Martin in for the slam. He had a team high 18. Rice wins again 72. 57. All right, ladies side over Rice. Emotional week for senior guard Erica Ogumake, who will play her final couple of home games tomorrow night against UTEP and then Saturday against Old Dominion, perhaps for the conference championship, by the way. Erica has set the standard, scoring, rebounding, where she's one of only three active players in the country with at least 2,000 points and 1,000 career rebounds. The pre-med major says she's ready to finish strong in the postseason. At the moment, I'm trying to just focus on this one first game that we have before the next one. Um, but it's an exciting week. I'm having family that will come through. Um, and it's cool. It's exciting. I know it's happening, but I don't think I'm letting myself think it's happening. Yet. You know, just character. I mean, she has such incredible character. Every day we know she's going to be, um, you know, she's going to show up and, and lead well. All right, uh, three weeks from tomorrow night. Are you ready? Astros play for keeps. It's opening night against the Angels at Minute Maid Park, so they're still getting ready out in Florida, taking on the Marlins in sunny West Palm today. Zach Greek, he lights out again in his second spring start. He went three scoreless innings, gave up only a couple of hits, struck out two, zero ERA so far for Zach. Michael Brantley uh, had the only RBI, a double, in a 2-1 loss to the Marlins. 
All right, uh, report out now. Several reports. The longest tenured Texan at 10 years. Long snapper John Weeks is on his way to getting a new deal with the Texans. It's going to be well deserved for Weeks. He's never missed a game, has the franchise record of conse uh, consecutive games played at 160. All right, last stop NRG. Rough ride of the night. Bull riding over at NRG tonight. Bailey Warden is the uh, Cowboy aboard a bull named Northern Lights. And like most rides, the bull is going to win this one right here. Warden gets thrown around like a rag doll right there. Takes the hard tumble. You see it right there. That is tough. Then the bull, uh, Northern Lights, wants a little bit more action right there. Yeah. Down he goes. Ooh, lights out. Bailey with a rough ride of the night, I think. Unbelievable. Back off, bull. He's he okay, good, though. Willie Nelson was great tonight. Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. See him out there. Good yeah. Go get that. All right. Thanks a lot, Randy. We'll be right back. Just before Fallon tonight, General Motors is looking to make itself known in the electric vehicle battle. The company has announced the creation of a brand new battery that can go up to 400 miles on one single charge. That's just slightly more than the most powerful battery made by electric powerhouse Tesla. GM says on top of its power, the battery is significantly cheaper. Sign me up. The car manufacturer plans to roll out 13 new electric vehicles during the next five years. Now, if only they could do that for cell phones. Uh huh. That would as be well. Wouldn't that would it be though? Needed. We would be in for sure on that right there. <laughs> that would be shocking. Yeah. <laughs> See what so you to did. speak. Yeah. I know. Hey, my weather blog is about our three models that we use to look at short term forecasts. And I took yesterday's, last night's, to yeah. see how it did for this morning. Mm -hmm. So have a look at my weather blog. In the meantime, all that rain is evaporating before it reaches the ground. Good right. deal. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. And thank you so much for watching. The Tonight Show is next. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Good night.